morning friends. How are you all today? I hope you're well. I'm back in the shed. <laughs> I'm back for hopefully finishing what I started yesterday. I don't know what order you're going to see these videos in. There might have been a video in the meantime, but I'm continuing from the day you saw me getting those pearly little purple sprouting broccolis in and mulching and all that. And at the end of that video, I'd said that I might, I was going to have my lunch, see if I could cool down and carry on. But actually, now, it wasn't boiling hot. It was about 30 in here, but it was really high humidity and it, it was just getting to me again. <laughs> um, I think my body hasn't properly cooled down since the heat wave or something. The long and the short is, I just was feeling rough, really rough, and I thought, you know what, just go home. I had I had achieved my priority for that day, which was to get some food in the ground for winter. So yeah, I went home. I'm back today. Now, I've got a bit of an urgent job to get on with this morning, because we're due a storm. I didn't know about this storm. Um, when I checked the weather forecast, the windy bits, they're just off my screen but a friend messaged me last night to just say I hope you've got everything on the allotment tied down it's due to land it's due to be with us in two hours but my goodness it's already so it's not a rainstorm unfortunately if it was a rainstorm I would be out there dancing no it's a wind storm like I said it's due to be here in two hours but we're already getting the beginnings of it. Um, I don't know if you can hear any of that gusting. So we're going to have, it looks like about four, five, six hours tops of, um, of a background wind of about 40 miles an hour with gusts up to 60. So yes, I know there are some of you in some parts of the world who have much stronger winds than that, like you have it much hotter than me, what have you. But look, that kind of wind is the kind that can do a bit of damage. In fact, literally now, just walking down the street, a branch has come flying out of a tree. It's kind of sort of come, come down at a slight angle, bounced off the roof of a car, a parked car, and then into the street. Not a huge branch, but, you know, eight, ten feet long and about like sort of the size of a wine bottle, thick. So put it this way, if that landed on your head, you blimmin' know about it. Um, I did just pop across the street and I looked on the top of the car, couldn't see any damage, but fortunate. Yes, so, oh my goodness, it's already getting so gusty out there. So my priority this morning is to get those bean canes up, the bamboo canes, and get my tomatoes lashed to them as well as I can. I'll probably also prune out some of the tomato foliage as well to stop them being acting like sails. Um, I mean it's really picking up already, goodness me. Now as I was walking down I was thinking oh gosh I'm really short of string, I'm, I'm really running low on string but then I remembered, I can't remember if I showed this to you all, uh, it was for my, it was my birthday last year, haven't used it yet, from my sister. So it's a big old thing of twine. I can't remember what twine it is. It, is it jute? It's probably jute. But let me show you what it's housed on. This is a little bobbin, a little reclaimed bobbin. And it's so lovely because I'm a Lancashire lass. And Lancashire is the home, or was, we don't really have it anymore, but of the um, of the cotton industry in the UK. It's what all the cotton mills are. So I've got some lovely bits and pieces. I've got some shuttles at home, and obviously this little bobbin now. Lovely. And actually the, I don't know if you can, you can't quite see it, can you? The ticking, the fabric that is on this end cushion, mattress, is from a Lancashire cotton mill, one of the only ones that's left still working. It's one of these sort of like a heritage centre 
where you can go and see how the old, old mills worked and in the process of doing that they're actually still producing fabrics so when I wanted to buy a, a ticking is a sort of it's a cotton fabric but it's quite a heavy durable fabric very simple it's what would have are you hearing that oh my goodness Poppy we're no longer in Kansas sweetheart um yeah it's what Poppy her it's what in the old days would have been used for to make a mattress oh she she's looking a little bit nervous about going back out there the wind monsters are going to blow up your bottom and frighten you don't do it Poppy don't do it <laughs> um yeah so I I got in touch with them and uh, managed now that Poppy is off that let me see if I can lift it up a bit to show you can you see so it's just a very simple red stripe on white background but it's really good sturdy fabric um, in theory it'll last forever for my shed mattress so yeah I was really glad that a I remembered that so that I have got some yarn yarn I'm not knitting um, some string but also it's just nice to be able to show you that and you know, I'm going to hide out here with you for a minute more. Um, so yeah, so Lancashire, absolute heart of the rag trade in Victorian times, right into the 20th century. In fact, Manchester used to be known as Cottonopolis. Very, very good reason that the mills developed and worked so well in Lancashire. It's a couple of reasons. Firstly, the great port of Liverpool, dead easy for getting the bales of cotton uh, transported in. Of course, we have massive coal fields throughout Lancashire, so instant power supply to... Because these mills were all steam driven. So you've got your power supply, you've got your port for bringing your cotton in, We've got the trade links for getting the, the produced fabrics back out. Of course, the Manchester Ship Canal. That made life even easier for once the bales of cotton have landed in Liverpool, they can be taken up the canals to the factories. But one of the main reasons that the cotton industry did so well in Lancashire is because Lancashire is damp. <laughs> now, I'm not having a go. Listen, I'm a Lancashire lass, I'm allowed, Lancashire lass, I'm allowed to say these things, but Lancashire is damp. There's a geological reason for it, in part. We get all that uh, moisture, heavy clouds coming in off the sea. So they come across the Atlantic, they make their way down the Irish Sea, and they come, you know, they come on to land but between Lancashire and Yorkshire there's a big old ridge down the back of the country called the Pennines and you know what the clouds they just can't make the effort to get up and over the Pennines so they dump their load in Lancashire and then much lighter float on over to Yorkshire so yeah Lancashire is a damp county it's a wet county if it's not raining in Lancashire it's because you're just waiting for the next shower to start. So all that dampness in the air helped to, I've got so many cat hairs going on, that dampness in the air helped to prevent the all the threads from breaking. If you're making weaving cotton in a very, very, very dry environment, your threads will break. So yes, I grew up amongst the cotton mills and the coal mines of Lancashire. All oh, the coal mines have gone now, I think. I think they have. When I was a kid, where my school was, the boundary for my school was formed by all the old slag heaps. So that's the waste material that's as a byproduct of coal mining. Pretty overgrown. For us, it was a playground. It's a fantastic playground. We'd run up and down and up and down and yeah playground a filthy dirty playground but we loved it so yeah 
I think I need to make a start. <laughs> I was going to be raking the leaves this morning too, but there's no way I'm standing under those big trees that have been shedding. I'm not standing under them today whilst raking leaves without a crash helmet. And I don't own a crash helmet, so it ain't happening. But I think I had better get on with these, um, getting these tomato supports in. <sighs> I hope it works. Wish me luck. <laughs> well, you wouldn't know it was starting to blow a hoolie from this little chap's very restful demeanour, would you? Actually, the wind has abated just for a moment. So yes, high time to get out there. Hmm, this little one though, bringing me round. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think she's going anywhere. Are you going to stay there, Poppykins? Are you going to stay out of the wind? Oh, your eye looks a bit weepy. Should I have a look at that for you? Okay, yeah. Let's just get on with it. Get out there. Because in a couple of hours, those trees are going to be going sideways. And I don't want my tomatoes to be doing the same. Two down already. <laughs> oh my goodness. When the wind drops for a moment, <clears throat> it feels perfectly pleasant. Actually, even when it gusts, it feels pleasant. It's warm. And the wind is fresh. to get some settled weather for a while. Right. <clears throat> Not terribly easy to get the poles in because the ground's quite dry and hard. But on some of them I've got these metal posts, so I lash the bamboo to the metal posts and then come up and get the plant lashed to the bamboo. Oh my goodness. At least next year, now I've got these posts, uh, these poles, I'll be able to get this set up right from the outset. emergency repairs. I 
might need to bring you closer. So, I don't know, can we hear each other? Oh, you're in a wonky bit of bed now. Sorry about that. Um, I actually love the sound of the wind in the trees. And I love the fact that it has a word all for itself. Suffing. The wind is suffing in the trees. When it starts over there, honestly, I don't know whether you can hear anything. Subtitles! When, when that gust starts over there, it almost sounds like a wave coming up a beach. Oh, I think that's as far in. Um, yes. I'm trying to put my Pollyanna spin on it. It's actually still quite muggy, quite humid. So let's get this one done. And then I think, ooh, can you hear it starts over there in the big tree? Oh, love it. Apart from, obviously I don't want damage to people or property, but otherwise I love a good, good really good blowy day. It's fresh. Blow the, all the cobwebs away. Right down about 30 more to go I'm gonna put you back in the shed for a while because it really is blowing oh the other thing I need to do today let me show you I need to do another big harvest look I mean this is like two days I picked a couple of days I did a big pick in the drizzle look at all these more to come just show you the weird and wackies that is a Gary's Gorgiosity and a couple of big ones there. Don't be confused by that one. That is an Amish paste that has fallen over. So I'll get a new steak. These ones do not look good. These are the Get Stuffed. I think that's been sunburned. Maybe the one behind. Look at the beautiful colours on it. Gorgeous. Uh, Loads more cherries to pick. The Rose de Bern are getting really weighty now. Yeah, these all, these all, some of these are only supported by a little bit of brittle old willow. Okay, yes, I really need to pop you all away um, and get on with looking after this lot. I think I'm going to have some Amish paste to pick soon. That's the big one that's fallen over. Gorgeous, it's sort of, isn't that pretty much perfect? And then these almost, almost ready. More coming, more coming. Yay! Oh, right, I'm gonna pop you back in the fridge. Not the fridge, I'm gonna pop you in the shed whilst I uh, get on with getting this lot a bit more support. Phew just in the nick of time <clears throat> literally as i was in one row getting the new poles in and <clears throat> getting them all tied up the, the row behind me it was just collapsing all around just <clears throat> the first two rows the gardener's delight my absolute workhorses stalwarts of the kitchen garden every year they're always my priority they're a good cropper great taste raw cooked bottled whatever so, but so they got the good stakes the good kind of metal stakes and chunky wooden stakes so it's the rows behind me where I've got my Amish paste Rose de Ben get stuffed Gary's gorgeousties and the like they got slightly older bamboo canes all that I had left and they're, they're all just going snap snap it was like a, a house of cards coming down so few glad I got that done I've got to say even I mean I, like I was saying out there I love the blow I've had to bring you in here it's far too blowy out there now I do like the blow 
but it's always just that I prefer it if it was the late autumn and I'd done my harvesting because it's always just that concern that plants are going to get wrecked and you all know by now I rely on this this is my food so I've got a feeling when when the next I'm here probably tomorrow I've got a feeling there will be some damage quite possibly even with the new poles but I've just had a nice harvest oh isn't that isn't that a beautiful sight that oh my goodness that's a couple of neonates <laughs> yeah I'd say there's about oh, it. it's probably about five or six kilos there in pounds five six ten twelve twelve pounds or so is that right anyway yeah something like it's got to be 10 pounds it's great i'm chuffed and hopefully well two things one that harvest is coming home with me and being processed i'm not risking leaving it out there two that's taken a little bit of weight out of the plants so hopefully when there are big gusts hopefully they can move with the gust rather than wallop down on the ground um Fingers crossed. Oh, this year continues to be tricky, doesn't it? You know, it's crazy. Two days ago, we had a 14 hour non stop drizzle day. Non stop, 14 hours. One day ago, completely clear sky, absolute blue sky, blazing sunshine and heat again. And now today, we're in the middle of this windy storm. Hey Poppy, oh she's been right at my feet the whole time. Animals and wind, they're not keen are they? Friends of mine who are teachers always say that with the sort of infant and junior school kids, when they go out at playtime on a windy day, when they come back in they all go a bit doolally <laughs> and I think, I think the same happens with our little furry friends. Right, there's another really important job I want to do today and I've got my little paper bags out to remind me do you all remember way back when I decided to save one of my celery plants from last year they all overwintered fine and then we got to about April or May and they all started to flower great now I needed that space for beans and squash so I took the majority well I took them all out bar one it was the one that's been sort of making its way up through the rose bush um, it looks like the seeds are nearly ready what I don't want is with this gale I don't want those seeds being blown everywhere else I mean I don't mind if a few self seed but I want to make sure I harvest those seeds so that I can use them next year so yes I shall be going out snipping off all the heads, just hanging them. I'll hang them in the bag upside down. So basically, <coughs> I'll tie them in bunches on a piece of string and I'll tie that string to the handles. So the heads will be hanging in here, sort of loose. The bag is just to catch any, as they dry, they'll drop into the bag. And then basically that will then get hung on my onion drying rack. Oh, I need to get the onions out. Will I do that today? I don't know. I think, yeah, definitely going to do that in a minute. There's a lot of, <clears throat> I was mentioning this the other day and also on my Facebook page, there's a lot of stuff that's dying back and it's really upsetting to see because it's really early in the year and it just shows how much the garden has struggled this year because of this just insane dryness this year we've had a literally a couple of days of rain since March March April May June July August in six months we've had a handful of days of rain it's so unlike us anyway quite a few things have are, are, are dying back and yesterday when I came to the garden I actually found it quite distressing to see so much stuff dying already so rather than see that and be upset by it one of my jobs in this storm today i'm just going to go around the garden and anything that's dying or dead i'm going to take it out chop it up compost it so 
it's going to be a case of sort of out of sight, out of mind. And then I can re sow in places. But yeah, I don't want to see dead plants in the garden because it's just, it's too sad. It's too early. Right, okay, let's go and get the celery before I forget. Oh, <laughs> quickly, so many lovely seed heads. Boy, Columba, what a day. Oi! I thought I'd be really clever and hang the bag in the rose bush. But it's, oh my goodness, it's just, everything's going flying. I'm not even going to bother tying these together, as I said I would when I was sat in the chair the the day. I'm just going to get them in this bag and out of the wind. Yeah, let me give you a look. There'll be plenty, plenty of seed in there, both for me and to share. Woo <clears throat> Ouch! <laughs> it's a rose bush, Vivi. It's a rose bush. What do you expect? <clears throat> it's probably not a bad idea um, for all of you who are saving seed from various things to have a, a little look around the garden at the moment because, especially in the UK, if we're going to be having some stormy days like this, what you don't want is for your seed to get blown everywhere rather than you collect it in bags. I'm thinking a lot about things like the calendula seeds, cosmos seeds, all of those types. Oh, can I reach that? That's awkward. Um, one, you don't want them to just be blown off everywhere, but also if if we ever get rain again um, you don't want them to get soggy and rot on the plants which is weird because I know a few of you have messaged me and said that you've had non-stop dumpings of rain for days on end can you all stop being so selfish <laughs> and send some my way please pretty please mm, I think a lot of those have dropped already but there are some on the end. Good. Right, that's, that's, that's a good job to get done today because it's been on my mind a few days and I kept forgetting to gather them. Uh, but a stormy day is a good reminder. Get out there, gather your tiny, tiny seeds which can be so easily blown away. Yay! Right, next job. The wind is getting stronger by the minute. You lot are getting put away now. It's too noisy. Ah, oh, it's really fresh. Oh, it's such a lovely change to the the heat and the oppression that comes with it. Fingers crossed for me, for you all, for everyone who's in the path of I think it's Storm Eileen or something. For anyone in the path, you know, I hope there are no damages to your persons no damages to your properties, in your gardens, greenhouses, polytunnels, your plants. I hope everything will be okay. I hope that for myself too, of course. Um, it's really, really picking up now. But where I am in my garden, there are no immediate trees near me, so I feel safe to carry on being out there, which I'm going to do. I'm going to do... I might do some deadheading, all these kind of jobs which are way outstanding and of course watering, yeah, daily watering still. Um, and then I'll wend my way home but I think probably today I'm going to go the long way home because the way I normally come in, you know where you see me where the compost loo is, that way out, firstly we've got a load of big old trees on that corner but also as I come out of the allotment I go straight into a park the park one of my local parks and again big old trees in that park and time and time again when we have these kind of days branches will come down we don't normally get trees down except there was that one from storm 
I can't remember if it was Brendan or Kira, we did have a tree come down. Remember I showed you? Massive right across the footpath. The council's way of dealing with it was to just basically cut a chunk out of the middle that was crossing the path. The, the rest of the tree has been left there. Great habitat for some small invertebrate friends and vertebrates. Which one? Either or. Yeah, so I don't want to risk walking home that way because you know what? It doesn't take too big a branch to knock you out if it's on your head. So yeah, I'm going to stay a while, do a bit more, enjoy the freshness and catch up with you all again really soon, I hope. So until then, please take care. I hope, 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 hope everyone will be okay with this current storm we're having. I'm sure you will be. I hope so. Until next time, cheerio.